Hello, everybody. I hope everybody's doing well. We will begin the December 17th, 2023 Sunday worship service. Please close your eyes, and as we lift our prayers to God, we will begin the service. I will raise my eyes to the mountains. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. Hallelujah, beloved Heavenly Father. Today, on your day, we thank you for being able to gather with our brothers and sisters. And then that through the internet, we are able to have fellowship with those who cannot join us to hear. We know that our help only comes from the Creator, from our Savior, from you, Lord. There are so many things that we are unable to do with human strength, but you, Lord, you are God who can do all things, and we thank you. And amongst the, all the problems that we face in this world, you have protected us with unchanging love, with your grace, and you have guided us. And thank you for guiding us on this path of blessing. We think we know that you are a God who solves any problems, and that we can place our faith in you, and we lift our worship to you. Upon those who are lifting their worship to you, please bless them with the gratitude of their salvation, with the gratitude uh, for your grace, and for gratitude for, uh, for your healing, a God who can heal all diseases. And please pour new strength into us so that this will be a time that is glorifying to you. We come before you with our worship. Please allow the Holy Spirit to be with us and guide our worship. We thank you and pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
ください。our Savior and our God. Now we come and bow before you as we gather for worship. As we offer our hearts, please examine our hearts and prepare it. Please let us see through our eyes that are blind, hear through our deaf ears, and soften our hardened hearts. Please cleanse us with your holy word. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness for the many sins we commit daily. Holy Spirit, we ask for your assistance because our hearts are so easily swayed by our fleeting emotions. Please protect our hearts so that we are no longer lured away from you to sin by the wealth of this world or other temptations. Please help us, Lord, so that those who have placed their faith in you will not turn their backs on you. We ask that you cleanse and restore us through your abundant mercy and saving grace. Please help us live humbly in this world and place our lives into your hands, Heavenly Father, and change so that you can change and mold us like your Son, Jesus Christ, who lived obedient to you. As Christmas approaches, we remember your love, Heavenly Father, your love that sent Jesus Christ to us on this earth. You have bestowed faith upon us who are meant to die in our sins, and through Jesus Christ we have been reconciled to you, Heavenly Father, and we greatly rejoice in this truth. Please allow your gospel to spread from this Japanese church of Austin to bless the city of Austin and through the missionaries around the world so that we can see the gospel spread to all countries. And we ask that genuine faith in you will be spread to all peoples of the world and they will be redeemed righteous and inherit your eternal life. During this season, many of our brothers and sisters will be spending time with their families and we ask that you protect them during their travels and bl please protect them oh, and please pour your healing upon those who are fighting through illnesses and diseases and for those who are going through uh, who carry so many worries and concerns please give them peace in the midst of their trials so that we may sincerely worship you from the bottom of our hearts and let this time be glorifying to you 
We pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's move to a time of announcements and introductions. Uh, there was uh, uh, Miss Sayuri, who came uh, about four years ago, is visiting us again. Welcome. Thank you for coming. It's been four years, and she has become more, <laughs> more pretty. And we have Miss uh, Sunako, uh, and welcome back from Japan. Wonderful to have you. And we have somebody new in the back. Oh, welcome. So if there's anybody celebrating the birthday... God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God be with you, God be with you, God be with you, God be with you. Congratulations. It's really blessed their lives. So next week we will have our Christmas service. And we will continue to have our offerings for our Christmas offering until next week. And so this Lottie Moon offering that we have here at our church, this is a woman, a missionary, who was a uh, a missionary in China until 1912, and this is a uh, this is a uh, offering that is in in honor of her. And in 1912, there was a, a huge famine in China, and many people starved during that time. But during that time, she sold all her belongings and. Uh, she actually starved herself and starved to death. And so this is in honor of her. And the day she died was December 24th. Uh, it was uh, on Christmas Eve. So in honor of her, we during our Christmas, we all of our offering will actually go to the missionaries who are serving across the world. And so as we lift our prayers, let us uh, offer this, and we'll continue this uh, offering till next week. And so during the weekday, as you are praying, if you can lift up the church, if you can lift up your, the brothers and sisters, please keep them in your prayers. We have many people uh, fighting cancer and other uh, illnesses, and please uh, pray for the brothers and sisters who are returning to Japan. And there are many people who are going back to Japan. There are people who are going to different uh, states. And so please pray for the uh, safety of the brothers and sisters' travels, that they will be blessed. And please pray for uh, the people who, uh, who do not believe. Uh, maybe that's your family, your friends, or your neighbor. Let's have a time of offering. Our offering box is located in the very back. And you can always uh, put your offering uh, before the service or after the service. So the offering is an offering that is pleasing and acceptable to God. It is, and this offering is for God's kingdom. Let us pray together. Beloved Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus Christ for, the, for us who were meant to die in our sins. And for that, Jesus Christ uh, received his trial on the on the cross, and we thank you for this salvation, and with the gratitude of our salvation, with the gratitude for all you have provided during this week, 
as we give thanks to you, we offer our hearts to you, we offer our worship to you, and we offer this offering to you. And not only this, but we ask that you will use this for, uh, uh, we thank you for all the people who are serving and are helping prepare the food, that are helping clean, who are help, help pr uh, and please uh, bless those who are helping us uh, prepare this worship service. And we ask that through this offering, you will cleanse it so that it will be used for your purpose to spread your word and your truth. We ask that you will bless and open uh, heaven, open the heavens up for those who are giving their offerings today. We thank you and pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will be reading from the book of Luke, the Gospel of Luke from chapter 24, verse 13 through 20 and 25 through 27. And behold, on that very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, which was 60 stadia from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all the, these things that which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you are walking? And they came to a stop, looking sad. One of them, named Cle Cleopas, answered and said to him, Are you possibly the only one living near Jerusalem who does not know about the things that happened in Jerusalem? And he said to them, What sort of things? And they said to him, those about Jesus the Nazarene, who proved to be a prophet mighty in deed and word in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and crucified him. And then he said to them, you foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that all that the prophets have spoken was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to come into his glory then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets he explained to them the things written about himself and all the scriptures amen Beloved Heavenly Father, today we are yet again trying to listen to your word. We know that your word gives us eternal life and that it has the power to solve all of the problems we face today for those who believe in Jesus Christ. Whether it was 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ healed so many uh, who were sick, we know that that same power exists and that same guidance from you exists today. And we place our faith in your word. Please help us listen to your word. Open our ears to listen. As we, we have not come here as a coincidence, but this was part of your plan, for your plan of salvation, and we thank you that you are a saving God. We ask that for each person here, they will be able to receive all the blessings, the salvation, the healing that you have and in store for them. Please, as you pour your grace into us, which we need every day. We ask that you prepare our hearts, and we pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I would like to start this message from one photograph. So does everybody uh, familiar with the footprints in the sand photo? This is a very famous uh, photo. And so when somebody was about to, uh, was sleeping, uh, they had a dream. And they had a dream uh, about the beach that he was walking with Jesus Christ. And so at that time, he saw that there were two footprints in the sand. 
And he saw his life also match those footprints, and that Jesus Christ was always with him and was always guiding him. And he was uh, he saw this as a vision in his dream. But when he was going through the the lowest points of his life, the most the cruel, uh, the hardest points in his life, he saw that the footprints combined, and um, there was only one set of footprints. And so one of these footprints was uh, Jesus's, and one was his. But when he was going through his trials, when he was going through the hardest times, he only saw one set of footprints. And he thought, uh, he, and he said, Jesus, I thought you promised that you would always be with me through the good times and the bad. And he became very saddened by this. And so he asked Jesus, Jesus, why is it that when I was going through the hardest time that you were not with me? And that's when Jesus said to him, My beloved, you are most precious to me, and I am always with you. And that's why when you were going through the hardest of times, when you were unable to walk, that's when I picked you up and walked, uh, carried you. So Jesus Christ is always with us. And it, when we are unable to move ourselves, Jesus is willing to pick us up and continue walking. And that's why uh, at that time he only saw one set of footprints. And so in our lives, we wonder sometimes why God forsakes us. And there, are, and maybe there are times when we think that, uh, when we misunderstand, and that is a misunderstanding because Jesus Christ is with us. Even if we are not able to feel his presence, Jesus Christ is always with us. But at times, we wonder where Jesus went. We wonder where God went, and we misunderstand. But actually, there are so many times when we are separated, from, uh, we are walking away from God. But even in those times, God is with us. And so the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God, is also guiding us as well. So let, next week we will have, it'll be Christmas, <laughs> but uh, we actually had a Christmas service last week officially, but we will also have another Christmas service t uh, next week. And during, uh, and so uh, during Christmas we u read this uh, uh, verse about uh, how a virgin shall conceive and bear a child and he shall be called Emmanuel. And so what does Emmanuel mean? Yes, as long as if you have, if you're able to see, you, you can see the answer on the board. It is, and so it means God with us. And so as Jesus Christ was born, he was given the name that God with us, Emmanuel. And as he was resurrected in his heaven, now Jesus Christ's Spirit, the Holy Spirit, for those who receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will always be in their hearts and be always with them. And so Emmanuel means God with us. And Jesus is, it is also saying that Jesus is God. And the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus Christ, is always with us. And so Jesus Christ is always walking with us. But there are times when we forget, when we cannot feel His presence. And even in today's passage, the resurrected Christ appeared before the two disciples, but those two disciples were unable to recognize that it was Jesus Christ. And why could they not recognize him? That is because their faith was lacking, and that prevented them from recognizing him. And so when we read the, in the book of Luke, when we read the passage that it says, during this day, this was three days after Jesus was crucified. This was the day when Jesus was resurrected. Two of the disciples were walking from Jerusalem 
and Jerusalem is where Jesus was crucified. And it says that they were about 60 stadia from uh, Jerusalem, and they were heading to Emmaus, which was where they uh, uh, where they used to or where they lived. And so this is, uh, does anybody know how far 60 stadia is? Well, it's, it's okay because uh, the historians figure this out for us. So this was about seven miles as, uh, from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And so they were discussing all the things that Jesus Christ had, all the miracles and all the things he has said and performed. Okay, so we have a name that, it, that is going to come up here. And so one of them was uh, Cleopas. And so we actually don't know who the other person is because their name is never mentioned. But in the book of John, we know that the names of the women are, uh, are said. And so this was uh, the Mary, mother of Jesus, and Mary, the wife of uh, the Clopas. And we know that this Clopas is is the same. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, historians who believe that uh, Clopas and Cleopas are one and the same. Uh, because there are some sometimes where names can be uh, spelled out uh, differently, but they are the same name. But but what more importantly than knowing if Clopas and Cleopas are the same, we know that uh, these two were talking about the crucifixion of Christ and the resurrection of Christ, and they were heading to Emmaus back to their home. And so the, as these two spoke as they returned home, so these were disciples of Jesus Christ, and they were trying to be obedient to Jesus' teachings. But Jesus was crucified on the cross, and they were very disappointed, and they were returning to go back to their old way of living, lifestyle. And Peter even tried to do that. But after he met Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ, but Peter was still fishing and he was, uh, he was uh, trying to go back to his old way of living uh, as a fisherman. And so as they were speaking and talking, Jesus approached them and began walking with them and spoke to them. But the two of them, it says that their eyes were kept from recognizing Jesus. I mean, there are times when our eyes are unable to see all things that are... But in this case, this was their, uh, talking about their faith, and because of their faith, they were unable to recognize Jesus. And so there are times when we, there are things outside of our perception. Oh, because some, we, uh, when we are dating and we find somebody we're about to marry, we think they're the most wonderful person in the world. But after we get married, sometimes we wonder why we married our spouse. And so sometimes our vision can be, uh, 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 can be very veiled, and we are unable to see things as clearly. And we understand that for those who are not laughing, you, had, you made a great decision. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe those who are laughing may have uh, a little bit of experience with that. But these two were prevented from recognizing Jesus Christ. But they, 
could not believe that Jesus was going to be resurrected. So they did not expect Jesus to appear suddenly out of nowhere. And this is actually mentioned in the book of Matthew. And in the book of Matthew, it says that two disciples actually appeared, Jesus actually appeared before them uh, differently, looking different. And so maybe the resurrected Jesus Christ was slightly different from how he was before he was crucified and so these two were also prevented from re recognizing who they were talking to but if you have faith th they would have recognized him and just like these two for us as we live our lives sometimes we and there are times when you are falling away from God because you don't uh, we don't know where Jesus Christ is but what, how would you expect Jesus to look like? Well, how would you expect God's grace to look like? And for those who do not understand that, they sometimes fall away from God because of that. And what happened to Judas Iscariot who betrayed Jesus? Because what happened to Jesus was not what they expected. They actually expected that they would receive status and power as long as if they were with Jesus. But when Jesus uh, turned out to be somebody that, uh, or happened, what happened to Jesus was completely out of their expectation. They felt betrayed. They felt betrayed that the, the Jesus that they followed uh, did not um, equate to the, what happened to Jesus on the cross. And so as they walked, they uh, spoke, and he said to them, what are you t two talking about? And so these two are uh, dis in a discussion, but it says here that they were looking very sad. But why were they sad? Because they were also, they also felt betrayed by God from what happened to Jesus. And they were so hopeful uh, that Jesus would become king, but he, uh, and but they saw him crucified and die, and they were very disappointed uh, on that outcome. And so one of the men here, Cleopas, answered him, saying, "Are you possibly the only one living in Jerusalem who does not know what happened, the things that have happened in the last couple of days?" And he, he, so he explained about Jesus being placed on the cross, and he was astonished that this man walking and approached them did not know about these events that happened. But these men believed only what they saw, which was Jesus putting, being put on the cross, but they did not see the resurrection, and so they did not believe in the resurrection, so there is some problems with their faith. But here, uh, rather than uh, Jesus scolding them for the lack of faith, they are scolding Jesus. Uh, and so Jesus said to them, what sort of things? And so they met, told him, this is about Jesus the Nazarene who proved to be a prophet mighty indeed and word in the sight of God and all the people. So this, so they said that Jesus is a prophet, but Jesus is not just a prophet. Jesus is God. Jesus is the Son of God, and you must believe in that. In the, unlike the prophets of the Old Testament, God came to us 
But these people here were not able to believe that. And so they said this was a prophet, mighty in word and deed. But the chief priests and our ru rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and crucified him. And he said, they continued saying, we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. And so this is also a problem. Because is Jesus somebody who was supposed to free Israel from the Romans? But we are talking, Israel here is the are the people of God. But Jesus did not just come for Israel, but he came for the entirety of the world, for the human race. But here they said that, no, he's just a prophet that was uh, here to free Israel. So they had some misunderstanding. And so they said this man died, and it's been three days since that, since that happened. But some of the women in our group uh, went to the tomb early in the morning and said that they could not find his body. And they came back to us saying that they had a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive. So they heard uh, all these things that had happened. And what did Jesus tell them before he was crucified? Before he was crucified, he said, I would rise after three days. And he had told them this fact over and over. And as Jesus Christ said and predicted, he rose from the from the grave after three days, but they still did not believe. They still could not believe that Jesus could be resurrected from the dead. And so they said some of those who were with us went to the tomb, and they found the tomb as exactly as the women had told us, has said, and they did not see Jesus. And so Jesus Christ was resurrected from the tomb, and so he would not be at the tomb but those and they but they know that they the tomb is empty but they still could not believe that Jesus was revived from the dead and so Jesus said you foolish men and slow of heart and he says slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken was it not necessary for the christ to suffer these things and to come into his glory as, so the, the prophecy prophets have said that jesus christ would defeat death and rise uh, victorious over death and Jesus had also mentioned this and taught this to his disciples many times but they still did not understand and so he began from talking about Moses and with and about all the prophets and he explained to them all these things written about himself and all the scriptures and during that time, the, the Bible would have been the Old Testament of the uh, Deuteronomy, and we call this the Old Testament today. And so during 2,000 years ago, the Old Testament of, that was the Bible of the time. And what Jesus explained in the Old Testament was in, explained in John 5, 39, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. He's saying the Old Testament bears witness of, and talks about me. And so the Old Testament is a evidence of who Jesus is. And so if you read the Old Testament, you will not, you might think that this is the history of Israel, but you are mistaken. And that's because this is foreshadowing Jesus, the coming of Jesus Christ. It is foreshadowing God's kingdom for those who place their faith in Jesus Christ. 
And he says, the scriptures, the Old Testament, point to him and bear witness to him. And this is connected to him. And if you understand that, then you have correctly understood the Old Testament. Because what is most important in the Old Testament, where, where is that? It says that the Israelites were freed from slavery, although they were slaves in Egypt. But in Exodus, where they exited Egypt, uh, I believe that is the most important section of the Old Testament. Because as they were escaping out of Egypt, there was one more miracle, and that was the Passover, the, the festival of the Passover. And all of Israel, all, uh, across all the houses, they placed the blood of a lamb over the doorposts of every household so that their firstborn son would not be killed. And so the blood of the lamb was used in the Passover. And there, those who followed that, there was salvation from God's wrath. And so for those who believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, they will be able to escape death and receive eternal life. And that is what Jesus is talking about. And so that's why when there are 300 uh, plus pro prophecies about Jesus Christ, and all the prophecies were fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And even Abraham, who is the father of their faith, God asked him to sacrifice his first one and only son, Isaac. And he was going to go through with that. And he intended to follow God's word. And on the same mountain where Jesus was crucified, he had Isaac carry the wood for his uh, to be sacrificed. But before that could happen, God stopped him. And for uh, in place of Isaac, he prepared a ram to be sacrificed. And so they, uh, they sacrificed um, uh, the lamb. And in the same way, Jesus Christ was offered for us. This was a foreshadowing of what was going of the crucifixion of Christ. Because as Isaac here is carrying the wood, this is the same way Jesus would carry his cross up to that mountain. And so all the things that was prophesied in the Old Testament through the suffering of Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice, it was tied together. And so Jesus, as a special uh, uh, teaching, he taught these things to those two. And so he talked about the Old Testament, about the suffering of, of the Christ on the cross. And what did the two do? The two, as they approached Emmaus, their village, they welcomed Jesus Christ to come with them. And they strongly urged him and saying, stay with us. And they wanted him to stay with them for the evening. And so Jesus went in and stayed with them. And uh, we actually saw a play, a Christmas play last week. And we saw that uh, Jesus was always knocking outside the door, uh, knocking on the door. And so these two actually welcomed Jesus into their home. And it says in Revelations chapter 3, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with, him, with me. And this was a promise that God gave. And so these two welcomed Jesus Christ into their home. 
And as Jesus was there, he took and broke, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and began giving it to them. And does this remind you of something? This was during the, uh, the Last Supper, as he said, this bread I br is my body broken for you. And this, this wine represents the blood I have shed for you. And so as they rem recalled the Last Supper, their eyes were finally opened and they recognized him. And as soon as they recognized him and accepted him, accepted who Jesus Christ was, your eyes are open at that point. And they realized that Jesus was victorious over death and resurrected from his tomb. And he was, they were able to see who Jesus was. And they said to one another, were our hearts not burning within us when he was speaking to us on the road while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And so before, they, when they read the Old Testament, they could not understand it. But because this is the word of God, they studied the Old Testament, but when Jesus taught them the true meaning, they finally understood uh, what the Old Testament was talking about. And that is very important because, because you'll see here that when you are reading the Word and your heart is burning, the truth is burning, then that is something where you are experiencing the salvation from God, and that is very important. Does everybody read the scriptures every day? There are some who read the scriptures in the morning and in the evening. And when they were asked what they were most uh, thankful, one of them said, he said, I was able to wake up and read the scripture in the morning and in the evening. And I was able to do that every single day of this year. And I am so thankful and grateful to God. And that is what it means to walk with Jesus. And that is what it means to believe in the grace and the blessings that God gives you. And in the children's ministry, we have some uh, Bible verses that we memorize. And so these children will uh, learn these passages in English. And so let's watch. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Romans 5 8. God demonstrates his, uh, his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Genesis 2 17. You must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. From for when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Dicta. John 1, 12. Yet to all who did receive him, to all who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Romans six twenty three, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Genesis 1, 27, God created human beings in, the, in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. John 5, 24, very, tr very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has eternal life. They will not be, they will, they'll, they will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. Romans 10, 9. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Genesis 2, 7. The Lord, the Lord God created a man from the dust of the ground, and the man breathed through his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. John 3.16 says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. <laughs>
<laughs> We're very proud of the children. So as these children memorize the Bible verses, and they do believe in Jesus Christ, but there are uh, people who do not believe in Jesus Christ who have memorized the scriptures. But if they one day understand what these scriptures mean, they will be saved. And first, it's what uh, Eli memorized. This was one of the verses that I memorized even as a child who did not believe in the uh, had faith. And that was because uh, my friends would invite me to church and go to church. And they would f make you memorize this verse. So this was the one verse that I memorized. But to the person who evangelized to me, explained this verse to me, I was able to then accept Jesus Christ. And so it is, it is important to read and memorize the scriptures. And if you can understand the meaning of it, you will be saved. And you will be given an eternal and wonderful blessing. So these two were able to believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And though they were trying to return to their old ways of living, they returned, they turned around and went back to Jerusalem. And from there, from Jerusalem, the gospel would spread across the world. And so they began to relate about their experiences, and they were able to uh, witness and about who Jesus Christ is. And as we read the scriptures, as we receive the grace, we are able to then believe in Jesus Christ. But there are times when the scriptures are hard to believe. There are sometimes hard to reconcile how, how some things happens to our church members. But even in our church, we know that the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ has continued and is present today. And so as we hear the, what has happened, just like the two, when they just, if they just know just from a knowledge level of what happened, but we know that it, uh, it, it is more important to understand that Jesus Christ is resurrected that he, and that he lives, he is alive and lives with us today and is guiding us with that same power. And we had a wonderful testimony in our church, and that was our sister Eriko and her testimony. Does everybody uh, remember Miss Eriko? As she actually went back to Okinawa, Japan. But we received a communication from her last week, and I'd like to share that testimony. So two years ago, Miss Eriko was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And the doctor said that this had transmitted to the bone or transferred to the bone. And so there was no way to do surgery. And you would, she had about three months to live. But she, but she believed that the resurrection, the resurrected Christ would heal her and placed her faith. And we also prayed for her. And so this is a uh, eight years ago during uh, our choir. And so, and so uh, Miss Eriko was sharing the gospel, believing that her life was short, so she shared it with her sister and her family and her nephew. And her sister accepted the gospel, and the nephew accepted the gospel. And so Ms. Eriko contacted us uh, last week that her nephew is going to be baptized this week. 
and the sister is, is uh, currently participating in the choir of her church and that they are, be, they are uh, finding opportunities to serve at the church. And so two years have happened, uh, even though the doctor says she only had three months to live. And so she had a PET scan, which is a method of detecting whether you have cancer or not. And Ms. Eriko went through that scan. And what the doctor saw was that the cancer was completely gone. And so two weeks ago, a Miss Eriko, and since there was about two years, uh, they wanted to know what happened to the uh, cancer and they had another PET scan. And as a result of the PET scan, they saw the cancer was still completely gone and that her bones were stronger. And so the Jesus Christ who was resurrected from the dead with the same power that he brought people back to life 2,000 years ago, with that same strength, he had healed Miss Eriko. And there is something that the doctor said two years ago when he saw the PET scan because he couldn't find the cancer anywhere, but what the doctor said was, there has to be cancer somewhere. But he, I, he couldn't find it. But he can, he said, but it has to be somewhere. And so what I thought when he said that, that this doctor has a lot of faith, <laughs> because even though he couldn't see it, he knew, he believed that it was there. But, and so, just like the two in the scriptures today, the tomb of Jesus Christ was empty. They had evidence. And, they, and there were pe pe uh, women among them that said that Jesus Christ was resurrected, but they didn't believe that. And today, Jesus Christ is still alive, resurrected from death, and guiding us with that power of the resurrection, and, and is healing people who even the doctor said they would die. And there is reason to believe. And as I showed this photo about the footprints in the sand, are you walking alone? That is not true. The resurrected Jesus Christ is walking with you because Jesus Christ is alive today. And he is with you today, no matter what you are facing, no matter what is happening to you. Through the power of the resurrection, Jesus Christ will guide us. Let us pray. Beloved Heavenly Father, even if we can, uh, can feel your presence or cannot feel your presence, we know that Jesus Christ is always with us and that you will always bring us back to a place of blessing and that your plan is always to guide us back to a place of blessing. We ask that you open our eyes, that you open our spiritual eyes, that as we look upon Jesus Christ, we will be able to walk with you. We thank you and pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Jesus Christ, who is always with us, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, for those who have offered their worship, who have placed their faith in the resurrected Jesus Christ, who are trying to walk with Jesus Christ every day upon each and every one. From now till eternity, may they abundantly and abundantly be blessed. Amen. <laughs>